Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Love Life Now Foundation's White Ribbon Global Awareness Night, where you will hear from men from different pockets of the world using their voices to never tolerate domestic violence. My name is Laverne Gordon, and I am the founder and president of Love Life Now Foundation that seeks to promote year-round awareness around the issue of abuse throughout its various initiatives. This particular initiative is centered around the nationwide white ribbon campaign that began originally in the 90s in Canada as a way for men to encourage other men and boys in their circles to never commit, condone, or remain silent about all forms of gender-based violence and discrimination. Gender equality begins at home and in our communities. And the men you hear from tonight are all hoping you will be led to talk more about healthy relationships and consent from right where you are. It's going to take all of us to put an end to abuse. So your presence here tonight is invaluable. We hope you're moved to become part of the solution. Hi everyone, Alberto Vasari from El Mundo Boston and Channel 7 here. Now, while I was born and raised in Boston, my father is from Cuba and my mother is from Ecuador. And my daughter's mother is from the Dominican Republic. Now, for too long, uh, violence against women and girls has been tolerated. And the topic's always been thrown under the rug, not just here, but also in the countries members of my family come from. So this is indeed a global problem that we must continue to address. I am very proud to join other men who speak out against violence against women and girls. I do it for all women. I do it for my mother, sister, aunts, cousins, and of course my daughter, Alex, who actually inspires me more than anyone to continue to speak out. I ask other men to join and to be part of the solution against violence against women and girls. Hello, I'm David Manjawila, a legal scholar from Malawi, Central Africa. I believe violence against women should be defeated simply because women's rights are human rights, and human rights are by their very nature inviolable. But also from an economic point of view, I believe by doing away with violence uh, against women, we open up spaces in which women's unique knowledge, capacities, and skills they contribute tremendously to the development of third world countries like Malawi and uh, as well as Africa as a continent. Uh, I'm particularly inspired by the Women's Lawyer Association of Malawi, a uh, legal wing which uh, fights tooth and nails to do away with uh, violence against women in the law, but also by Chief Kajindamoto of my area, uh, who in our capacity as a chief is ending child marriages, which has been found to perpetuate uh, violence against women. Thank you. Hi, my name is Robert Taylor from London in the United Kingdom. Uh, and this 
quick video is in support of the White River Night Gala. Uh, one thing I think is a common theme across the globe is that domestic violence in any way, shape or form just isn't acceptable. It never was, it isn't now, and it never will be in the future. If anybody does feel that they uh, have issues or have problems, I just encourage anybody anywhere to reach out, seek help, phone a friend, seek 50-50, go for a walk. Uh, but one thing is for certain, taking things out on your loved ones, nearest and dearest, that you're there to uh, love and protect is not the answer. We are safer. We are more empowered. Somos más diversos. When we join together. Since 1999, Eastern Bank has given over $140 million, helping 1,500 organizations every year. So join us for good. My name is Bob Ward. I'm a news reporter in New England. Right now, I work in Boston, but I've been covering news in New England for almost 40 years. And too many times I've had to cover stories of fatal domestic violence. Too many times I've had to tell the stories of women who have been killed at the hands of someone they used to love, someone who may have been the father of their children. It's heartbreaking, it doesn't make any sense, and I don't know why these cases happen over and over again. That's why I think it is so important for men to be a part of this solution, and that's why this year and every year, I am so proud to take a stand against domestic violence. My name is Desai and I'm in the fourth grade. I like transition house because they took care of us. They helped us get a new apartment. Packing up was the hardest thing I ever did. I had to fold all my brother's clothes, and we still have a lot more to do. I like to cook with my mom, and when I go out, she thinks I'm going to be a good cooker, and then I'm going to have to cook for her just like she cooked for me. I go to yoga class, and it helps my body. Like when we take deep breaths in before we start, it helps my heart stay calm. At Transition House, I learned to respect my elderly. And I learned that I could trust other people that I love. And the thing I really learned at Transition House that sticks out of my mind is to love myself and love others. Welcome to Tea House by Desire. We're so glad you're here. Come in, there's no fear. Come play in our playroom, but you have to be good. This house is full of fun. We will love you to clown around. Tonight's event partially benefits Transition House, who we are advocating for this year to heighten awareness about their presence in the community, as well as the frontline work that they are doing every day to help victims and survivors of abuse. I encourage you to look them up to see the services that they offer. I hope you were able to take in information from the commercial that aired about them earlier. They are here to help you. So if you are local to the Massachusetts area, please seek them out if you are in need of help. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE. Again, 1-800-799-SAFE. And locally, the statewide domestic violence hotline is SafeLink, and they are run by Casa Myrna. That number you can see on the bottom of our screen. Got it? Pick it up with your big strong muscles and bring it over here to the shop. Boys can be loving. 
I need you to be brave. Okay? Gotta go. Boys can be shy. Boys can be sad. Why are you crying? Boys don't cry, right, honey. Be a big boy, please. Boys can be self-conscious. Boys can be intelligent. Can't be afraid. Boys can't be gentle. I don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, isn't this just boys being boys? Boys can't be weak. Boys can't be timid. Boys can't be hurt. Boys can't look soft. Boys can't be powerless. Because boys don't cry. There should be no violence against women and girls because I don't want that to happen to my mommy, my sister, my nanas, my aunties, my girl cousins, and girls that are friends. Support the White Ribbon Campaign. Hi, my name is Ariel. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and the reason why I do not tolerate uh, violence against women is because mainly I was raised by a single mother, a single grandma, uh, an aunt, and these are all women that helped shape who I am today in a way. And, um, you know, they always raised me with the values that you, you can talk things out, you don't have to resort to violence. And I think keeping that in mind, one of one of the main reasons why I, I won't tolerate it and one of the things that inspire me to want to help change things is the fact that I have five baby sisters that, you know, they're well on their way to becoming five beautiful women. And I don't want that to be even a possibility in their head to think that, you know, that I don't want them to have the fear that that's even a possibility that they can be victims of, you know, um, violence like that. It, it shouldn't be on the table. So um, that's, that's the reason why I like to speak up. And I think uh, it's very important for all of us men to speak up uh, against it. Hey folks, Sheriff Lamb. I'm the sheriff out here in Pinal County, Arizona. I wanted to talk to you tonight about domestic violence. I've been doing this job for a long time, and probably one of the most sad and heartbreaking things is to respond to domestic violence calls. Not only are they dangerous for everybody involved, but it also is heartbreaking to watch those people who have invested trust in one another to have that trust violated by somebody who brings abuse uh, or sexual abuse upon their spouse or another family member. So I have taken a stand in my life and I've put on the badge to stand against domestic violence and other crimes that tear families apart. I think the family unity is one of the most sacred and important things in our country and we should, be, we should hold that as men and women as the highest uh, priority in our lives. I have dedicated my life to my family 
I've dedicated my life to law enforcement. So not only have I put on this badge, I have also put on this white ribbon. As a sheriff and as a law enforcement official, I have always stood against domestic violence in the home. So please, take this pledge along with me. God bless all of you. Let's protect our women, our children, and our families from the dangerous and disheartening effects of domestic violence. Hey, this is Kevin Acosta, well known as Johnny Brother, coming to you from Canada today to encourage our men and boys to protect our women and girls from domestic violence. I'm a big guy, protecting and empowering our women. Let's stand together for the love and the protection for all the ladies. The most dangerous part for a woman should not be their home. Be a part of the solution. If you see something, say something. What about all the boys who are profoundly affected in a negative way by what some adult man is doing against their mother, themselves, their sisters? What about all those boys? What about all the young men and boys who have been traumatized by adult men's violence? You know what? The same system that produces men who abuse women produces men who abuse other men. And if you want to talk about male victims, let's talk about male victims. Most male victims of violence are the victims of other men's violence. So that's something that both women and men have in common. We are both victims of men's violence. So we have it in our direct self-interest, not to mention the fact that most men that I know have women and girls that we care deeply about in our families and our friendship circles and, and every other way. So there's so many reasons why we need men to speak out. It seems obvious saying it out loud, doesn't it? Now, the nature of the work that I do and my colleagues do in the sports culture, in the US military, in schools, we pioneered this approach called the bystander approach to gender violence prevention. And I just wanna give you the highlights of the bystander approach because it's a big sort of thematic shift, um, although there's lots of particulars, but the, the heart of it is instead of seeing men as perpetrators, women as victims, or um, women as perpetrators, men as victims, or any combination in, in there. I'm using the gender binary. I know there's more than men and women. There's no, more than male and female. And there are women who are perpetrators. And there, of course, there are men who are victims. I, I'm, you know, there's a whole spectrum. But instead of seeing it in the binary fashion, we focus on all of us as what we call bystanders. And a bystander is defined as anybody who is not a perpetrator or a victim in a given situation. So in other words, friends, teammates, colleagues, coworkers, family members, those of us who are not directly involved in a dyad of abuse, but we are embedded in social, family, work, school, and other peer culture relationships with people who might be in that situation. What do we do? How do we speak up? How do we challenge our friends? How do we support our friends? But how do we not remain silent in the face of abuse? Now, when it comes to men and male culture, the goal is to get men who are not abusive to challenge men who are. And when I say abusive, I don't mean just men who are beating women. We're not just saying that men, a man whose boy, excuse me, whose friend is abusing his girlfriend needs to stop the, you know, the guy at the moment of attack. I mean, that's a naive way of creating a, a, a social change. It's along a continuum we're trying to get men to interrupt each other. So, for example, if you're a guy and you're in a group of guys playing poker, talking, hanging out, no women present, and another guy says something sexist or degrading or or, or, or harassing about women, instead of laughing along or pretending you didn't hear it, we need men to say, hey, that's not funny. You know, you, you know it could be my you know, sister you're talking about until you joke about something else. Or could you talk about something else? I don't appreciate that kind of talk. Just like if you're a white person and another white person makes a racist comment, you'd hope, I hope, that white people would interrupt that racist enactment by a fellow white person. Just like with heterosexism, if you're a heterosexual person and you yourself don't enact harassing or abusive behaviors towards people of varying sexual orientations. If you don't say something in the face of other heterosexual people doing that, then in a sense, isn't your silence a form of consent and complicity? Well, the bystander approach is trying to give people tools to interrupt that process and to speak up and to create a peer culture climate where the abusive behavior will be seen as unacceptable, not just because it's illegal, but because it's wrong and unacceptable in the peer culture. And if we can get to the place where men who act out in sexist ways will lose status. Young men and boys who act out in sexist and harassing ways towards girls and women, as well as towards other boys and men, will lose status as a result of it. Guess what? We'll see a radical diminution of the abuse because the typical perpetrator is not sick and twisted. He's a normal guy in every other way. Good evening. My name is Chief Jeff Bukant of the Avon, Massachusetts Police Department. Today, I'm taking the White Ribbon Pledge, and I'd like you to join me 
because it is such an important cause to me both personally and professionally. Far too often in law enforcement, police officers see firsthand the devastation caused to people and families through domestic violence. So please join me in taking the White Ribbon Pledge and stand up to domestic violence. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Amir. And I'm here today to show my support for the White Ribbon cause to raise awareness for the domestic violence issue organized by Love Life Now Foundation. Friends, domestic violence is one of the largest growing issues all across the world. Especially here in the US, I read an article that one in four women and one in nine men are victims of domestic violence. So here, I would like to point out that no matter what, who the victim is, it affects him or her really bad. And that's why it's important to raise the awareness that we should look at the victim beyond their gender and help in every way that we can. Thank you so much. Olá, meu nome é Rafael, do Rio de Janeiro, Brasil. Eu apoio incondicionalmente a Love Life Now Foundation, que apoia mulheres que sofrem ou sofreram violência doméstica. Eu acho que as mulheres têm que ser mais respeitadas em suas vontades e desejos. Não é porque ela não quer a continuação de um relacionamento que tem que ser morta ou até apanhar de seu marido ou companheiro. As mulheres só fazem bem para nós, homens. Primeiro como mães, onde transbordam amor para nos criar, e depois como esposas, onde convivem conosco tentando de todas as formas nos fazer felizes. O que seria de nós se não fossem as mulheres? Também apoia a White Ribbon Campaign e deixo claro que sou totalmente contra a violência doméstica porque eu nunca gostaria que um ente querido fosse afetado por ela. Obrigado. Rob Demio, Boston, Massachusetts. Every year I stand with the Love Life Now Foundation and I take the White Ribbon Pledge. I will not tolerate violence against women. I'm the father of a beautiful, smart, loving four-year-old little girl. But I'm also the son of a woman who suffered in silence for years in an abusive relationship where she was manipulated, abused physically, mentally, and emotionally. Her relationship ended when her abuser murdered her and left her for dead. I'm a firm believer if we want to implement change, we need to be that change. And if we want to maintain that change, we as men need to lead by example. My name is Christopher Borum. I'm a detective with the Cambridge Police Department. A very long time ago, I want to say 1977, I was still pretty young then, I'd say third grade. So, I mean, yeah, I knew what was going on, but at the same time, it was overwhelming because at the time we had everything, house, Christmas trees, and I thought we were one big happy family, except for the, the times at nighttime when my father was drunk, basically beating on my mother regularly. It got to the point where he beat her so bad and he cut her um, engagement ring off in the middle of the night. Those are, you know, the memories we have. Just kind of picking up in the middle of the night with my grandfather throwing trash bags in his car and getting dropped off at some strange place called Cambridge. That was transition house back in the 70s. I've seen how far it's come and I'm like pretty impressed. But back then, your whole world was completely taken from you. And you're like, where am I? We were a trash bag, me, my sister, and my mother in, in one room, one bedroom. And it was probably the grassroots infancy stages of, of transition house back then. It was just small. There was other victims, the kids. The people that ran it was, it was all women. You know, it's important to get my mother's story out there. Tough woman. It was a battered woman. She took her career. She was on went off of welfare. She went back to school at night, got her degrees, and became the treasurer at the soldier's home in Chelsea before she got the illness. Unfortunately, she has memory issues, but I asked her the other day, because she's been living with me for the past seven years, and um, I asked her, you know, what she remembers about Transition House. Got a little teary-eyed. She goes, the, the women were nice, you know, they're very nice to us.
Hi, my name is Sean Smith. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm happy to take the white ribbon pledge and do what I can to support stopping domestic violence against women, both here nationally and globally. I, I truly am proud of Laverne Gordon and Love Life Now and what they're doing to support stopping domestic violence in our lifetime. And as a child, I grew up having to witness that and it's something that to this day motivates me to do whatever I can uh, to help stop domestic violence. So thank you for supporting such a good cause. God bless everyone involved in such an important mission. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alvin and I am originally from Jamaica. There are three, reasons, three main reasons why I am against violence against women. Men or women are two halves of the same coin, oftentimes having different views, but equal in work. Secondly, I grew up around women that I still cherish to this day, namely my mother and my sisters. And every woman I meet is someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's daughter. And thirdly, if it is that we prey on those who are physically weaker, then what does that say about our moral compass? What does that say about our inner strength? That is why I am against violence against women. Good evening, my name is Urban Stewart, and I'm taking the White Ribbon Pledge today. I'd love for you to join me because this is such an important cause to my heart. Seeing the devastation that comes from domestic violence throughout anyone's life. I've seen the, the devastation it has on the kids, seeing their parents go through that, as well as like having domestic violence against the kids as well. So join with me and take this pledge, raise the women in your life, and stand up against anything that will hurt them. Hello, I'm Ine Ara Abbasi. I'm from Liberia. I'm taking on the White Ribbon Pledge because violence against women is prevalent in Africa. For example, some 900 cases of rape were reported in the last year. It is on us as men from Africa to Asia to Europe to America and all other parts of the world to take up the challenge and be a part of the solution to end violence against women. We men, we must foster healthy relationships and promote healthy masculinity. Thank you. Jane Does Well are proud to support the White Ribbon Global Awareness Night brought to us by the Love Life Now Foundation. Jane Does Well is a nonprofit organization committed to improving the lives of women in various stages of divorce and beyond. Our community empowers women through inspiration, education, resources, and connections through our various events and forums. Many of our members have suffered from domestic violence, and we do all we can to provide support. But we know domestic violence is not just a woman's issue. It is up to all of us to do our part. We salute the men from around the world, using their voices to help encourage other men and boys to stand up against domestic violence. We are so proud to honor the men who stand up to be part of the solution. Your caring message to other men has enormous consequences. You are doing your part to create harmony in the lives of men, women, and children everywhere. Jane Does Well thanks you. Hi, I'm Robert Sullivan, proud to be the mayor of the city of Brockton, Massachusetts, the community that we call the city of champions where I was born and raised. And I'm really uh, happy to be here with you today. Uh, domestic violence affects everyone in the community and world, even when friends, neighbors, and relatives are not completely aware of the situation going on. For this reason, I'm extremely proud to support the White Ribbon Campaign their commitment to raising awareness about glo the global pandemic of violence against women and girls in all forms through educational programming, community outreach, and corporate partnerships is truly near and dear to the city of Brockton. Thank you. My name is Juan. I am from Madrid, Spain. 
as a father of five young daughters and husband to a wonderful wife, I would like to join the White Ribbon Movement to speak up against violence and show our community that I truly care about this social problem. And I want all women to feel free and safe at all times. I believe the best way to give a good example is by showing love and respect to our family and community members, starting from our wife to the youngest ones. So the more love we see in the persons we care and share time with, the more love will grow in these people's hearts. Love will stop hate. Caring actions will stop violence. Speaking up will show our commitment. Because true men love women and prove it by showing them respect. Hi, I'm Jesse Johnson and I support the White Ribbon Campaign uh, because domestic violence um, against women is just one of those problems in our society that uh, I want to say a lot of people say they're advocates. Um, you know, we always talk about awareness, but are people actually doing anything about it? Um, that's the big question. Um, in working with a friend of mine, um, Laverne, on her book, um, some of the statistics that are mentioned is just, it's, it's embarrassing. And um, it almost kind of makes you sick uh, in regards to when you learn uh, what some of these uh, women have to go through. And, you know, it's up to us men to make sure that we are, you know, advocating for them. If we see something, I don't care if it's a family member, a uh, parent uh, needs to stop. Um, you know, my wife, Brooke, daughter, Rory, you know, I make sure that this stuff doesn't happen to them because we need to protect um, the women in our lives. Their voices need to be heard um, unfiltered um, because this is a serious problem that impacts more people than you can think of and it needs to come to an end. From this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution in ending violence against women. A propos de violence, garçons contre filles. I promise to never commit, condone, or remain silent. Et tout gens de violence. Ta denuncia esse tipo de atitude e comportamento. That contributes to sexual assault and domestic violence. Too often you hear women leading the charge against domestic violence. Men must know their voices are needed on the issue. Take the White Ribbon Day pledge. Share a ribbon with another male, young or old, and explain the significance. Never excuse, commit, or stay silent about abuse. Become part of the solution. I will follow your lead. Too often you see our faces everywhere, yelling from the rooftops, stop harming and killing us. But tonight sent another message. The fact that men need to be accountable to each other. Because when you say nothing, you are part of the problem. Please take the messages you heard tonight as inspiration to want to start and keep the dialogue going around healthy relationships with your sons, nephews, your colleagues, and friends, any man really in your circle, so that gender-based violence becomes a thing of the past. Thank you to our amazing, generous sponsors who continue to help us do this awareness work. We appreciate the amazing folks at Harford Pilgrim Healthcare Foundation and the Eastern Bank Charitable Foundation, as well as Jane does well. Special thanks to Leverett Media for their continued support and this video that you saw tonight. And of course, to each and every man that signed on to do this project without hesitation. Many of you I have never met in my life because you are from a different part of the world, but you signed on anyway. I thank you. And again, I am Laverne Gordon of Love Life Now Foundation. And we hope you join us on social media to help others continue to love life.